Hey everybody, come on in, let's do some crafting. When you get in, be sure to say hey, let me know you're watching. Be sure to uh, share the love, let people know that you're watching. You can sprinkle this video, get other folks interested in coming and joining us on our 30 days of lives. Today is day 19. And we are happy to be here. I certainly am. I'm going to switch things up and do a, uh, I'm going to do a wreath today, a pancake wreath to be specific. Why won't this, oh, I see. You move. Let's do it like this. I'm going to share this video so that my folks know what's going on. I want to share it there. One of the uh, big differences between a pancake wreath and a regular poofy mesh wreath is that it's flat, like a pancake, hence the name. There's no actual breakfast food involved here. So, sorry for those of you who are a little hungry or even hangry, but we're not cooking tonight. Let's make a wreath. Nah, let's make a pancake wreath. I'm going to show you all the goodies I got here. Pretty excited about this super cute design. It's all red and tan. Gingerbready. And, uh, there we go. Hey, sis. You can see the comments are coming in because I see my sis is here. So, first thing we're going to use is this here wreath form. Now it's tan, which you can see against my black shirt here. Typically, they're green, dark green. Um, I did get this one at Dollar Tree, like all the other ones. Um, but at some point, they had tan ones. So, I just grabbed a few just for kicks. Um, and I think it's going to work out perfect with all of our tan, uh, light brown stuff that we're using. So I also, I went ahead and I put pipe cleaners on here and I put, well, I've got 12 of them on so far. I'm going to put the last couple on. And so I've got six on the outside and six on the inside because we're going to make little pancake ruffles. We're going to put one in each of these here ties. We're also going to cut some, oh, we're going to make those ruffles out of these two meshes. Got just a straight tan, and then I've got this one that's got some red um, foil mesh stripes in it. Isn't that pretty? And both of these are leftovers from another project that I did. And so I thought instead of opening up another new roll of mesh, why not use what I've already got? Especially when it matches so beautifully with our sign. See that? Fresh baked cookies. I think that's super cute. This is really the whole design behind or the plan for the design of this of this wreath is this here sign and not only that but this crazy crazy cute gingerbread ribbon can you see the sparkles on there everywhere that there's white on the gingerbread boy and girl it's all glittery sparkly wonderfulness and of course I can't not love the black and white buffalo check. And then we're going to throw in some red with white polka dots too. So those are our ribbons. And then the last thing we're going to use are these little gingerbread and boy girl, gingerbread boy and girl faces that look just like cookies. They look like sugar cookies as opposed to gingerbread person cookies. But I think they're going to work out beautifully with our design and with our to match our sign. So what I want to do is, I'm going to show you first, I need to finish getting my stuff ready. So I'm going to see why I can't see my comments. I know there's only a couple. That's right, they're over there. I'm going to cut off the hanger that's already on our sign because I don't need that. And instead... 
I'm going to hot glue on some pipe cleaners. And what I did was, I don't know if you can see it, but I put these little marks on here where I need to put on my pipe cleaners for where it's going to get tied onto the wreath. I did that ahead of time. Normally I don't do that, but this sign is pretty big comparison to our frame. And I know I'm gonna need to get it on there real securely so that it stays. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of glue down here. And my pipe cleaner right in that dollop of glue and a little more glue right on top of that it's all nice and gluey there awesome i think i got a hair there we go normally it's glue strings this time it was an actual hair go figure i shed hair Oh, I can see the comments now. I think if the comment is older and it kind of goes away, then I can't bring it back up easily on my iPad is all. We will make it work. You're the only one commenting so far. So when folks stop in, even if you're watching this on the replay later, Please just say, hey, let me know you are here. Thank you for joining us on our 30 days of lives. We really appreciate it. Oh, y'all, you're definitely going to want to come back tomorrow night because Jen and Sharon are making wine glass Christmas decor. And the set that Jen is making, she's going to give away. So you need to be watching the video, comment and say, hey, that's tomorrow night. And then sprinkle, you gotta share the love, which means share this video either to a crafting group that you know of or another group or on your personal Facebook page. That way we can get some more folks in here. So you just wanna share our love for crafting. And if you've been watching, for the past couple weeks, you've seen lots of different types of crafts that the three of us have been doing stuff with the kids. This is my first wreath, but I am going to do another wreath, um, an actual poof wreath. That one's coming down the pipe, let's see, in two weeks. I think it's my last day of 30 Days of Life, so it's actually like a week from... Saturday, a week from this Saturday on the 28th. Oh yeah, Thanksgiving, Saturday. That's when that is. Hey, Chris. I got to talk to your favorite brother-in-law today at work. Mm-hmm. Sure did. Thanks for watching, pal. Even if you're just stopping in. All right, so I put the last of the pipe cleaners on here, and I put them on each crossbar, and I wrapped them around the inside and the outside so that they don't move side to side. They're going to stay put, okay? Because I don't want them moving around on me. Move this over here. I'm going to cut my mesh. Let's see. I'm going to actually put my sign over here. So I have somewhere to put my mesh. So I am going to... Measure these out at 16 inches, and I'm gonna cut them with my rotary cutter. Now I only need, let's see, I need 12 total, so I'm gonna do six of each, six of each uh, pattern of mesh here. All right. If you've never used a rotary cutter before. It's just like using a pizza cutter. You know what I need to do is put some non-skid something on the bottom of my cutting mat here because otherwise that baby just slides all over the place. I did put some on the bottom of my Easy Bow Maker and on that I just put some dollops, I turned it over obviously, 
and put some dollops of hot glue on the bottom in like the four corners and then two in the center. Waited for it to dry. And then when you flip it over, it's just, it's not tacky, obviously like sticky, but it stays on your, it stays still when you're using it on a, uh, I don't want to say, I want to say shiny and that's not right, but on a smooth surface. Doesn't matter if it's shiny or matte. That's five. One more. And yeah, I kind of cheated and I, not cheated, but I pre-measured these out, seeing as how they are remnants, so that I knew I would have enough. Because <laughs> I definitely, seeing as how I'm using scraps, did not want to run out. Had I used a brand new one, I definitely would not have run out. But I wanted to use up these guys. So this one looks pretty sheer. I mean, very sheer. You can see right through there. You can even read my shirt still. Um, but that's okay, given the style of mesh that we're doing. And plus, since I have a brown or a tan wreath underneath it, too. So we got six of that one. We need six of this one. Two. If I was cutting a whole crap ton of mesh, I'm going to be honest, I would totally cut these in advance. Because sitting here watching me cut mesh is kind of like sitting watching paint dry. And that's not fun. Throws up on my hair. It looks like it came back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. We're back. Hey, Jatora. Thanks for stopping on in and watching. I'm making a pancake wreath. Oops. Hey, Jody. I don't know if you're still here, but it tells me you stopped in. Thanks for stopping in and watching. Oh, all right. So we're going to start putting our mesh on our wreath. So one of the reasons why it's called a pancake, like I said, is that it's going to end up pretty flat. And that's what you want if you've got, say you're going to put it on your front door and you've got a storm door and a screen, or you've got a regular door and a storm door slash screen door and you've only got like this much space in between you can't put a big old poofy wreath on there because a lot of times depending on who's making the wreath and just how big the poofs are and whatnot it could be i've seen them up to like eight inches tall or eight inches wide when you hang it so that's not going to work between two doors but this will so what i'm going to do i'm going to find the center here and i'm going to ruffle it up just by walking my fingers up the center and sort of gathering it up it's gonna end up looking kind of like a butterfly just like that and I'm gonna put it in face down right into one of my ties here and I'm actually gonna start on the outside almost put it on the inside that would not be good I'm gonna start on the outside I'm gonna wrap my tie around it once and twice okay and you can see, pretty much looks like a pancake. Okay? All right. Hopefully I remember to alternate. Y'all yell at me if I don't, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. This one's easier because I can see this white stripe is right in the center. So I know I've got the center of the mesh all the way around. Again, we've walked it up. We've got our bow or our pancake. I'm going to put this right in the next tie, face down. Do that once and twice. I'm going to kind of fluff it out to get its nice, pretty shape. There we go. I'll fluff them all out once I get them all on, too. Actually, not once I get them all on. Once I get all the outside ones on. Another interesting thing about pancake wreaths is that you do all of the outside first 
Then you go back and do all of the inside. And you'll see why. Let's see here. There we go. Locking my fingers up and gathering it as I go till I get my butt. Plop that in the next tie. Once and twice. This is also a good wreath for, say, nursing homes or retirement communities or that sort of thing. When you want something pretty on the door, but you don't want something huge. You know what I mean? Like size-wise, side to side, it's going to end up pretty much the same size as a poofy mesh wreath. But it's not going to stand out, literally as far as a poofy wreath well there we go there's our bow love this red glitter in here red foil is what it's called do that once and twice there we go i did cut all of my pipe cleaners in half before I started using them because I don't need a full, you know, 11 or 12 inch pipe cleaner on these because I'm only tying in the mesh and the ribbons. But if I was doing a poof method, I would, I have learned that I should leave my uh, pipe cleaners whole. And then at the end, I can always cut off the ends. Or you can curly cue the ends. It really depends on your preference. And we can take a look at that when I do my poof wreath on the 28th. So I told you tomorrow night, Jen and Sharon are getting together and they're doing the wine glasses for Christmas. So they're doing a set of four and each one is gonna be a different character slash theme. So, like, one is sort of Santa-looking, one is um, Christmas monster-looking. You're not even supposed to say the G word because it's copyright. Y'all know who the Christmas monster is, right? And there's a... What are the other ones, Sharon? Is there a reindeer one? And then a sort of snowy-slash-snowman one, I believe. I'm gonna put this is our last one for the outside. Hey Pam. Sheer is nice. Careful now. <sighs> Alright, so I've got all of the pancakes slash bows slash whatever you want to call them around the outside. So now I need to cut some ribbon tails. I'm going to cut 12 inch tails. You can't, well, you could if you wanted to. Traditionally, don't put a big old bow on a pancake wreath because it kind of defeats the purpose of it being flat. Because you want your bow to be big and poofy and beautiful. But you still can do ribbon tails. Y'all, look at how cute and sparkly that is. It's so pretty. I love it so much. So I'm going to use my, yes, I don't want to run. Okay. I'm going to use my 12 inch tail maker, ribbon tail maker. Um, we saw these, we saw a number of crafters that we watched using these, something similar to this, on their crafting lives. Thought, man, that is so cool. Need to get me some of them. And then it occurred to me that, you know what? I'm not going to use this. Only because I can see 12 inches is like right where this divides. So I'm just going to do it like that. Um, so I thought, you know, these tail makers, they have different names, the different uh, brands that are out there are pretty slick. We should get some of those. And then we looked them up online and for like three of them, meaning three 
three little pieces in three different sizes it was like 28 to 35 dollars for this 28 to 35 dollars and i thought no um i mean i buy my frames at the dollar tree i can't you know be spending a bunch of money on or excess money that could be used on say mesh and ribbon and whatnot on my um supplies even though you know they would have lasted possibly forever and worked very very well so instead jen said i can make those and sharon and i said we'll let you so jen made us some out of scrap wood she even just used scrap wood she didn't have to use anything brand new she cut them rounded the edges and uh stained them all different colors she even made a little label, Crafty Witches. That's what we call ourselves. Um, she even made a label, and she made us both two sets, y'all. Two sets. And she didn't charge us anything. Except, you know, love and uh, free publicity. <laughs> so we got one set in two and a half inch. Because your ribbons are typically either two and a half inch or one and a half inch, like this guy. And one set would have been just fine. But Jen was like, you know what? Go big or go home. She had the time and the uh, energy <laughs> and the supplies. So she made us two sets. Y'all, I can't cut and talk at the same time. If I was just truly using my ribbon tail maker, I could totally do that and talk at the same time. I could talk at the same time. Just can't cut. Or I'm, I can't count. Maybe I can't talk. Just saying. Hey, Marilyn. So, Marilyn, are you another uh, quick trip friend? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need three more. I'm going to put one of these in each tie. One, two, and three. All right. Take a stick pin, put them in here so that doesn't unravel again. pretty feisty ribbon there. I'm going to use my tail maker on this one. I need 12 tails in this here one and a half. You're so funny. Thanks. Looks aren't everything, but you know. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. See how much faster that went using the sail maker? I know. Jen's amazing. She is amazing. Made these for us. My scissors in there. You slide your scissors in and you cut them all at once without cutting yourself. I need better scissors. You slide this out. Cut through the top. Bada bang. See how much quicker that went? Yep. 12 and 12. Done and done. I'm going to stick a pin in this guy. There we go. Set him aside. Okay, one last thing for the ribbons. We're going to dovetail the ends. If you don't know what that means, it means I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to cut it in a little V, starting from where the fold is, going out toward the end. See that? So it just gives it a pretty little edge. And it's just a lot cuter than just the plain old straight end. You know what I mean? Plus the straight end's not all that straight because it was bundled over when I cut it. 
So we'll do it this way. Cut the little bee. And there we go, dovetail. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do all these now while I'm thinking about it. If I was doing, again, if I was doing a regular or a poof wreath, a poofy mesh wreath, I would do some of this cutting ahead of time too because like I'm doing a regular old poof wreath from start to finish, poof wreath <laughs> from start to finish, takes like two and a half hours. Marilyn, you wrote me a book, girl, and I can't read the whole thing. It's so big. Always a quick trip, but we're doing friends sharing. Oh, from CJ's. Okay. Did you just say you also helped collect the essentials when Sharon's apartment fire? Thank you, Marilyn. So, let's see here. Keep going with this dovetailing. I probably met you then. Awesome. One more set of the red. And then we gotta do it on our gingies too. That one went flying. That's okay. I was talking about that on one of my other lives, how I was cutting the tips off of popsicle sticks and the ends went flying. But I didn't really worry about it too much because I don't have little kids or pets running around that would uh, pick it up and try to eat it or anything. So same. I'm not worried if this goes flying a little bit. If my kids pick it up and eat it, they're 15 and 18, so it's their own darn fault for being that silly. Just saying. Yo, I just can't get over how cute this gingy ribbon is, y'all. Look at, look at the sparkles. So sparkly. I love it, love it, love it. Overall, this isn't a particularly sparkly project, but you get the glitter in this ribbon and the glitter in the red foil adds just enough sparkle. So if you get those, uh, Sparkle Grinches, who don't like glitter or what have you, I think they'd be okay with this. Okay, just about there, y'all. Just about there. This is one of those tasks. It's not quite as bad as watching paint dry, but not all that fun either. I am going to get me a pair of those Fiskars scissors that Jen and Sharon got. I found them at, I think Jen said she got theirs on Amazon. But I found them at uh, the Hoblobs. Found them at Hobby Lobby. They are 20 bucks, but use that 40% off, girl. $12 for some really awesome, comfortable, sharp, good, fabric and ribbon scissors. Then I can use them just for fabric and ribbon too, and that way they'll stay sharper. Cause if anybody knows anything about cutting fabric or ribbon, you really want some good sharp scissors and then you don't want to use those scissors for anything else. I used to, so doing that, I shed a lot all over, shed a lot all over my cutting mat. So one of my, oh yeah, all over myself too. <laughs> one of my favorite tools in my toolbox here, lint roller. Don't leave home without it. Let's see if I can get it back in its spot. Close enough. All right, so now we're gonna start putting on our ribbon tails. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of each ribbon Big one on the bottom, little one on the top. Don't worry, I'm not completely covering the gingy because we're gonna spread it out so we can see them, okay? I'm gonna fold it in half, facing each other. 
So that way I can find the center. I'm gonna gather it up in the center, sort of like a, if you're folding a paper fan. I'm gonna put that in the tie where I tied on my mesh. Give it one, two turns. And then actually a third turn, because that's the last thing I'm gonna put in there. And then I'm gonna sort of spread them out. So I'm gonna spread them out so that the red is over here and the gingies come down here. That way I can see them both. Okay? What do you think? You get the idea? And we're gonna do that all the way around. I'm gonna put them in all the ties. I have Moana songs in my head today because the, well, we were watching Moana just a few minutes ago. Actually, I had to stop it mid Moana, not mid song, so I would never do that. But I had to stop it in the middle. I told the boys, sorry, about to go live in five minutes. Y'all need to take care of your business and get on out the living room. I mean, technically, they could stay in the living room if they wanted to. I don't know why they would want to. Unless they wanted to craft with me. That could be fun. Maybe not make an wreath. But something else. So another ribbon tail, like I said. So I'm going to put the little one on top of the big one. Fold it in half just to find the center. I'm going to gather it up. Sort of uh, paper fan folding it. Pinch it there in the center, drop it like it's hot, right there in my pipe cleaner. Give it three twists, because it's the last thing I'm going to put in there. I'm going to fluff it out, make it look all nice and purty. There we go. And I froze on my iPad. Doesn't look like I froze on the uh, phone. We'll just have to see what happens. Okay, find the center. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. So be sure to stop and be sure to say hi when you stop in. You can't. Say there you are. It's all fuzzy for me there. There we go. You see how those are taking shape there? So pretty. So, so pretty. I'm going to go out of this and come back in and see if I can't get it to clear up for me. Just a little bit. I just want to see the comments. All right. Uh, oh. Oh, you found the scissors at Walmart, too? Gotcha. Well, unless they're less than 12 bucks, I can get them for cheaper at Hot Flaps. All right. One, two, three. What I'm doing is sort of putting them in between my index finger and my middle finger and just kind of fluffing it up and out. So give it a little bit of a curve, give it a little bit of a sort of a poofy, a little bit of visual interest. One more here on the bottom. Then we'll go back to our mesh for the top. There's the center. It's another good thing I can easily find the center because of the gingies. Thank you, gingies. You made that easy. Inside that one, two, three. Yeah, just gonna refuse to give me my comments. Stinky cute. Thanks, sis. Mm. There we go. It's hard to do that. Uh, my fingers aren't very big. So if I put a two and a half inch ribbon in there, 
I was like, there's no give there. It's like just barely reaches through both sides. And you got to reach through both sides because it's wired ribbon. And if you don't get both of the wires going, you can end up with a, a hot mess. Sort of a janky looking ribbon. All right. Okay. So... I'm going to scoop my ribbons over here just so I don't snag them with my mesh while I'm going around. Okay, so I'm going to alternate. Since this one on the outside is shiny, I'm going to put a plain one on the inside row there. Let's see if I can. There we go. Stick it cute. Voice over not sync to lips. That'll happen. That'll happen, Marilyn. Sorry about that. I was I would say close your eyes, but that would sort of defeat the purpose of watching me craft. I'm just saying. All right, so we're gonna go back around the top now with our mesh. So I'm gonna find the center. I'm gonna gather it up by walking my fingers up. This is also a flimsier mesh. This here plain burlappy one is, but that's fine too. So, drop it right into the tie. I'll tie it twice. You know what, uh, Marilyn? If it's un unsynced, out of sync, not in sync. Sorry, boy bands. Um, go out and come back in. That should help you. All right. So there we go. So now, now you can see why we do the bottom or the outside first and then the inside. So that way the inside lays right on top of the outside. So you can see that one's going to lay right on top of that one. So it would be a little bit challenging to do our ribbons once this top row of mesh is already on. So we do the whole outside first, then switch to the inside. Can't say enough how much I love this sparkly foil mesh. I have some meshes that are all foil, like all foil all the time. This is just a little bit of foil, give me a little bit of sparkle. But we found these fall sort of variegated. Is that the right word? Um, fall color variegated foil mesh where it's like brown, red, orange, gold, and it is so sparkly and so beautiful. And I think I have like three full rolls and one partial roll. So I'll be all good to start my uh, fall crafts next summer when I start fall <laughs> or late next spring. Cause y'all know when you're crafters, you start early. That is for sure. I'm going to start your season early. All right, here's the half. A mesh, snag my other mesh, let go. There we go. There's our bow. I'm going to flip it over, drop it in from the top, upside down. So, because I'm going around the inside now, these are closer together, so there's a little more overlap between the actual pancakes themselves. So I'm gonna keep it going the same way. So like when I drop this one in, the left side of it, my left, your right, <clears throat> is on top of the right side of the sparkle one. So they're all gonna end up the same way. Okay, let go of your friend there. All right. Make sure my pipe cleaner stays in the middle there so I can tie my ribbons on. Just got three mesh left. Put our rip top ribbon tails on. Attach our sign. Our chingy cookies, and then that's it, y'all. 
it been? 40 minutes. That's not bad. So pretty much start to finish. This baby's going to take about an hour. Keep your shape. There you go. It's my last plain one. Looks amazing. Thank you, Karen. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for saying hi. Uh, if you like what we're doing here for our 30 Day Supplies, be sure to check us out each day. Our times change a little bit. Saturdays I usually do in the morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, Central, but not this Saturday. I'm actually doing it at night because I have something else going on all day. So I'm going to wait and do it at night, probably at uh, 7 o'clock Central. Otherwise, the ladies, when they do theirs in the evenings, it's also usually around like 6, somewhere between 6 and 7. It starts Central Time. For those of you who don't know, I don't live in Central Time. I live in the Eastern Time Zone. I am a Uber. I live in the UP of Michigan. Not all, not all of the UP is in Eastern Time Zone. Some of it's in Central. But not me. Water. Water, water, water. Doing a lot of talking. Throat gets a little dry. I definitely don't want to start coughing. Give anybody a wrong impression. Alright, so this is our last one. This is the last one. Got our bow. We're going to put it down, upside down, I don't know, right side down. I'm going to put it in our uh, pipe cleaner. I'm going to twist that twice. Keep it nice and tight in there. And then, like I said, these are kind of laying half over. So this one being our last one needs to go under that guy. Awesome. Okay. So, got all of our mesh on, top layer and the bottom, and now we are moving on to our top, or inside, however you want to look at it, ribbons, ribbon tails. If you didn't see our ribbon tails before, you're going to make this for your front door, you need to rewatch this. Um, heck yeah, totally perfect for your front door because it's nice and thin. Um, I can also go back in later and type up a list of supplies. I could have done that, um, but I will later. So these are our ribbon tails that we're using. This is red with white polka dots and this super pretty, I say this every time I pick this ribbon up, super pretty, um, slightly glittery gingerbread ribbon on the black and white check. And this one's two and a half inches wide and this is one and a half. So you can't see because my leaf is in the way. I'm going to lay the little one on top of the big one. I'm going to find the center, just right here. I'm going to gather it up just like you, just kind of like I was for my mesh, um, or just like you would fold a paper fan sort of back and forth so it's gathered nice and tight there in the center. I'm going to drop that right down into my pipe cleaner. This is the last thing I want to put in here, so I'm giving it three turns. Then I'm going to take my fingers, I'm going to put the ribbon in between my index and middle fingers and sort of fluff it up like this, just to give it a nice little curve, which is, kind of, like I said, harder on the two and a half inch ribbon because my fingers are short, vertically challenged, and so are my fingers. There we go. I'm going to do that same with the red. Gonna pull them down so that our red's not laying directly over our gingerbread so we can still see it a little bit. Okay, so you can see how that looks with the I can't even see the picture with the uh inside row now directly above the outside row or the top on top of the bottom. We're gonna finish those up, we got five more. Gather it up. Drop it like it's that. Yeah. 
twist this in three times. Go. Pull our gingerbread in towards the center a little bit and our red sort of out towards the outside. I'm gonna fluff them a little bit. There we go, beautiful. Moving right along. Ah, it's a Muppet song. I'm sure it's from somewhere else too, but that's where I know it from. Foot loose and fancy free. Drop that in there. I don't know which Muppet movie that's from, but Bubba would know. He knows all about the Muppet movies. go see so I'll just show you real quick see how much different that looks when I fluffed it versus just leaving it lay flat you can totally leave it lay flat if that's what you want if that's your preference for you you know what I mean and it'll make it flat flatter you know if it has to fit between your two doors you could totally do that I like giving it just a little bit of oomph take my red to the outside Make my gingies to the inside. Yep, yep. So I'm doing this gingerbread based off of number one, gingerbread are stinking cute. Number two, the sign that I got that we're going to be putting on here. Fresh baked cookies. We got gingerbread cookies on there. So that was the uh, basis for my design. Hence the tan mesh and the red. And the black and white came from, because um, I love black and white. It's like my favorite color combo ever. Probably put black and white in just about everything I do. Polka dots just for fun and whimsy. I'm a, I'm a whimsical girl. I like me some whimsy in my designs. Not wimpy. Whimsy. Whimsy. With an X. Alright. We got two more of these babies to put on. Not cute. Beautiful. Thank you, Bo. Jody, I agree it's cute. Marilyn, I agree it's beautiful. I, uh... I've been having a lot of fun making crafts during this crazy time we got going on right now. Uh, kind of what started all this is we started watching crafters going live on Facebook. Once all the musicians stopped going live on Facebook because they were getting slapped with fines. Because, you know, copyright and blah, blah, blah. But you know what's not copyrighted? Crafts. No copyright here. Gingerbread, not copyrighted. But that's why I had to say earlier, the Christmas monster, because the G word is copyrighted. Don't want to get in trouble from Facebook or anybody else for talking about copyright stuff. So anyway, all sorts of crafters started popping up all over the place on Facebook, doing live crafts, just like hanging out in their craft room. My craft room is my dining room, which is also my living room. No, I'm not showing you around because it's a hot mess. Um, but <laughs> Sharon's got a craft room all of her own. Jen has her shop for her craft room because she does woodworking and acrylic paint pouring. Other folks I've seen, they got setups in their garage. I like my car in my garage. Plus, it's not heated or anything. It's about to be winter, y'all. It's going to be get pretty stinky cold in there. So I craft on my dining room table. Luckily, I have a nine foot long dining room table and it is four feet wide. So I got lots of space. All right, that's our last ribbon tail. What do y'all think? I can't see. <laughs> I think this is so pretty. It's got just enough sparkle to give it some shine and shimmer, but not too much for all of the uh, glitter grouches. Thanks, sis. 
I really like this one. I really, really like this one. Really love how this is turning out. Um, so since everything's going the same directions, it doesn't really matter where my um, sign goes on the wreath, like what's the top. But I will tell you, I planned it out so that I would be able to put it, sorry, you can't see me, <laughs> put it right on the, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so that it would go right through where the ties are because you don't want to tie this to the mesh. Certainly don't want to tie it to the ribbon. You need to tie it right to the frame on the back for, uh, to make it sturdy so it stays on because tying it to the mesh is not going to necessarily keep it on. So I'm going to take my, I hot glued the pipe cleaners on the back right when we got started. Um, you could also use uh, zip ties. Um, they sell, they're called cable tie mounts. They're little one inch square plastic mounts. They have an adhesive back, but everybody that I've seen use them um, also hot glues them on. They don't trust that adhesive. And then it's got just a little hole in it, kind of like the back of a button. Um, you know, the 3D type buttons that have the loop in the back. You know what I'm talking about? Old style buttons. Um, so you stick your zip tie or your um, pipe cleaner, Chanel stem, whatever, through that. And then that's how you attach it to your wreath. So, so this is going to take me a minute. And go right in here and grab this, pull it through, and tie it on there. There we go. So I put it through to the back. I don't know if you can see this in my hand is where the pipe cleaners came through. And I'm just going to twist those really, really good around the frame. Like really good okay last one here's two oops you know what my tie just came off of my first one and I know why because I tied it too tight so, I'm going to be more careful with this one. Not do it twice, quite so tight. If my um, sign was lighter, I could honestly glue it on with hot glue. But this is wood, or particle board, it's not wood, particle board. So, it's actually fairly heavy and would not stay on my wreath if I just glued it onto the mesh. That's for sure. There we go. Getting that one twisted on there. I'm being careful so I don't do it so tight. All right. I'm still gonna have three of them tied on, so I'll go back and fix that one later. Plus, once I get this on, I can go through and refluff my ribbons as need be, seeing as how I had to flip this over and around a couple of times, which is totally fine. This is all wired ribbon, so it's very forgiving and it's very easy to fluff and refluff as need be. There we go. My, uh, for those of you who weren't here right when I started, I'm also putting on these here gingerbread boy and girl faces. They look like cookies, don't they? They look like sugar cookies, but gingerbread, because they're round, so they look like sugar cookies, so that they're perfect for this fresh baked cookies. I got them at Oriental Trading, and if anybody has ever bought from Oriental Trading, you know, a lot of their stuff comes by the dozen. So I have a dozen of these. So if anybody 
wants a couple, send me a message. And I will gladly hook you up. Because I don't think I need all 12. I definitely don't for this project. I'm only using two. But there's always next year. There's always other projects as well. So I'm just moving aside my mesh and my ribbons, feeling my way in so that I can get my chenille sims poked through to the back. There we go. Got them both. Got them wrapped around one of the bars. And there we go. So you can see that on the back right there is where I just tied that one on. Okay. So even though my first one popped off, it's still on there really good. What do you think? Isn't that cute? And I made sure to, so like I said, I pre like measured where I was going to put my ties for this to make sure that the top of my re is not where the bar is. It's where the space is. This is the top so that your hanger doesn't have to go like on one or the other side of the bar, especially if you've got like an over the door hanger, which are wider, you want to make sure that the top of your wreath is where the opening, the space here is to put your, um, put your hanger through that instead of where the bar is. That's something people don't talk about a lot when they make wreaths. That's something I learned the hard way. All right. Get a couple of these babies fluffed back up here. So my cookies, <laughs> so cute, y'all, what do you think? I'm going to glue them right there. I could have put my sign on the bottom and the cookies on the top. I could have put my sign sort of kitty wampus and put the cookies differently. It's all how you want to do it. I mean, my goal here was to show you guys the basics of how to make a pancake wreath. And then from there, once you get the mesh and the ribbons on, you can top it off however you want. I was really thinking about, boy girl, I was really thinking about, um, because you can't put a real ribbon bow on here, only because the whole idea is for it to be flatter. But I was thinking about, put a bunch of glue there in the center back. I'm going to plop it right on top of one of my Chanel Sims, one of my pipe cleaners, because it's just perfect placement, I think. And plus, it gives it a lot to grab onto, because it's got the ribbon there, it's got the mesh there, it's got the um, pipe cleaner there. So cute. Oh, y'all. I'm so cute. Sharon's craft room is a hot mess, but that's okay. You know, Jody, you're right. This would be perfect um, at a cookie exchange or bake sale. It would be a great something... So say if you were hosting it um, to put this baby up, or if you're doing like a cook, uh, like a bake sale for um, whatever, church, school, um, whatever the event, the group might be, uh, put this up as a decoration and then raffle it off. I would totally do that. I would totally, totally do that. I'm all about giving back. Donating my wreaths. I've donated three wreaths to my old theater so far that they raffled off um, for different events. Um, if it wasn't COVID and we could have like fundraisers and stuff like in-person stuff, I would totally um, do some for my boys school without a doubt. But yeah, this design specifically is definitely perfect for that. <laughs> Y'all, I'm so... So stinking cute! I'm so happy with how cute this is! You guys! I love, love, love the way this came together. Even though, yeah, I remember my, uh, gotta fix my sign. But y'all can't tell. Because it's still on there. It's still on there by all of its points. See that? And so, when you look at it sideways, look at that. It's like three inches wide, maybe. That's it. That's why it's a pancake wreath. Flat as a pancake, baby. You can put that between your 
front door and your screen door, your storm door, whatever. So you can use it. Um, I think about where my mom lived there in New Lisbon in her, uh, not a retirement um, place, but it was for folks who were retired or uh, the elderly, disabled, and whatnot. And it would have been so cute on her door. All the doors there were decorated. If you didn't decorate your own door, one of your neighbors came along and decorated your door for you. <laughs> so this would totally look cute there. Thanks, sis. So again, thanks everybody for stopping on in. Um, I appreciate you commenting. I appreciate you sharing the video if you really like it. Um, come back and rewatch it. I'll put the um, supplies in the comments so you guys can see that. And I'll pin that comment to the top, hopefully. But it's, you know, a Dollar Tree wreath form. This is a Dollar Tree wreath form. This one happens to be tan. Uh, they'll, they traditionally are dark green. I used, excuse me, two different rolls, uh, parts of two different rolls of 10 and a half inch mesh. Um, they were, I had 12 ties, six on the outside, six on the inside. And each piece of mesh was cut 16 inches long. And I just gathered it up with my fingers, put it in a bow, put it on there. Um, the ribbons I cut 12 inches. And I put two ribbons in each tie, one mesh in each tie, two ribbons in each tie. Put my sign on here with uh, pipe cleaners glued to the back. My little gingy cookie babies, boy and a girl. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. I'm just so happy this turned out so well. Oh my goodness. So come back tomorrow and watch uh, Jen and Sharon make their glasses, their Christmas glass sets, and be sure to, to uh, comment on there, say, hey, let them know you're there, and to share it. So that way you'll get entered into the drawing because the set that Jen is making, she's gonna be giving away. Just realized I was talking really fast. So Sharon's gonna make a couple, Jen's gonna make a whole set of four, and then Jen's gonna give hers away. Um, what am I gonna do with this? I mean, I'm totally not against keeping it, but I wonder if I could find some place to donate it to or auction it off or just sell it or so stinking cute. I have more gingies and I have another gingerbread sign, not the same exact sign, but a similar one. Goodness knows I got plenty more mesh. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. Thanks for saying, hey, um, Come back again tomorrow night. Well, Jen's going to paint in the morning, and then she's going to craft tomorrow night with Sharon, so she'll be on twice tomorrow. And then Saturday is me again, and I'm going to be on at night. Um, this time it'll be around 7 o'clock Central, probably. Um, and I'm going to make, I'm going to take a couple of Dollar Tree Christmas trees um, and put them together, and I'm going to make a swag. Super excited about that. And, uh, yeah, so Jen does... Monday, Tuesday, no, Sharon does Monday and Tuesday, Jen does Wednesday, I do Thursday, Jen does Friday, I've got Saturday, and Jen's on Sunday, so we're doing 30 days of lives, but just because November ends and our 30 days is over doesn't mean we're going to go anywhere, we plan on sticking around, so maybe not every day or every night, but you can catch us here in the Artsy Bits and Pages, Artsy Bits and Pieces page, and we also have a group with the same name. And if you join that group, we would love to see your projects, um, whether they're projects you made inspired by the ones that we've made or just other projects that we've done. Jody, I know you're super crafty. Um, you've done all sorts of amazing things throughout the years. So, um, yeah, check us out there and we'll catch you tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.